The story is told on behalf of the main character named Needy. The girl is locked in a mental hospital, where she occasionally punches doctors in the face. To understand how she ended up there, we need to transfer to a couple of months ago. Needy is an ordinary teenager and diligently studies in high school in a small provincial town. Since childhood, her best friend is a girl named Jennifer. She is the prettiest and most desirable girl in school and is also the captain of the cheerleading team. Jennifer calls Needy to go party this evening, as there is a concert tonight by some indie rock band from the capital. Needy, of course, agrees. The night before the rock concert, Needy gets ready and dresses hot, but not as hot as Jennifer, at her request. Needy also has a boyfriend, Chip, who isn't particularly thrilled with the idea of going to party at a biker bar, and in general, his girlfriend's friendship with a particular person of easy morals and questionable decency. Scream is heard from the window. Move your hooves, which means that Jennifer has arrived and the girls go to the bar, which is not the most elite, but there is no choice, as it is the only one in the neighborhood. Jennifer sees the band during sound check and pulls Needy to meet the cute guys. Jennifer clearly has her sights set on the lead singer. The band starts playing, something shorted out in the wires, and suddenly all of a sudden the whole bar is on fire. People are rushing in panic, but the girls manage to get out of the building through the narrow window of the toilet. The surprisingly calm lead singer is already waiting for them outside. He says it's great that you're alive. It's not safe here. I'll give you a ride. Jennifer happily agrees to the guy's offer despite Needy trying to stop her friend. Arguments that it's dangerous or even that they even have their own car don't work, and the cheerleader hides in the bowels of the minivan and it drives off into the night. Needy, on the other hand, returns home. She's scared and in her upset feelings. She calls her boyfriend, telling him about the bar burning down, how people smelled like fire, and where her friend went. Chip says he'd forget about the friend altogether, under the circumstances, and offers to come over to Needy's house. At that moment, she hears some sounds in the house, and suddenly Jennifer appears before her. Her friend is covered in bruises. Her legs are covered in wounds. Her jacket is covered in blood, and her face is covered in bruises. However, none of this seems to bother Jennifer. She says she's hungry and eats the whole grilled chicken. Afterward, she vomits up some black slurry, a volume almost bigger than her own body, and then runs out the door. The next morning, Needy sits at school, in a complete stupor, trying to process what has happened. Just then, Jennifer comes in, safe, unharmed, and clean, looking even better than usual. She pretends as if nothing happened, but Needy firmly remembers that she spent all night scrubbing all the blood and dirt off the floor. A teacher with tongs instead of a hand says that their little town lost eight people in that fire. Jennifer is amused by this information, which can't be said for others, like the captain of the school team. He sobs at all because one of the dead was his friend. Needy tries to tell her boyfriend about her friend's arrival yesterday, but he is skeptical of any hint of an otherworldly, supernatural version of events. Meanwhile, sobbing soccer player instead of lessons goes to the stadium, and here is here to him approaches Jennifer. Beauty lures the big guy into the woods on the pretext of playing with each other. There she undresses and tells the soccer player that he will soon meet his dead friend. No one saw him after meeting her. Needy is at home listening to an interview on the radio with the very rock band that played at the bar. The DJ says that the guys that night helped the residents to get out of the fire. This is a blatant lie, of course. Nevertheless, with this event, the band significantly hypes the whole country and becomes more and more popular every day. A month passes, life goes on, and people slowly come to their senses. Needy notices that Jennifer doesn't look good, tired and pale. Probably her change for the worse has betrayed the local goth's confidence points, and he gingerly calls Jennifer out on a date. To his surprise, she not only agrees, but initiates to spend the evening at her house. Gawk arrives at the address and finds a house that is either unfinished or already falling apart. The darkness, candles, and crypt atmosphere are so frightening that even Goth struggles to keep from running away. But the prospect of building an affair with the best girl in school and not on such feats pushed. Besides, Jennifer didn't take too long to find. After teasing the guy a bit, Jennifer snacks on him. At the same time, Needy, who is elsewhere, is haunted by creepy visions involving her friend. Also, Needy fails to get any sleep as Jennifer suddenly appears in her bed. The latter looks great again and talks confidently, so Needy's panic gradually subsides. Jennifer comes in to tell her what happened the night she left in the car with the rock band. The guys drove her deep into the woods, mentioning in conversation amongst themselves that she was a virgin. 
Jennifer thought they were rapists and decided to play along with their delusions of innocence. However, this was a misguided tactic because the guys turned out to be Satanists and occultists who were driving her to sacrifice her to the devil. That said, the Capitol Boys aren't the most ambitious guys in the world. They don't desire immortality or wealth. They want to become a famous rock band. After reading spells downloaded from the internet, the Satanists kill the girl. However, due to the fact that Jennifer was not a virgin, it was not a sacrifice, but rather a demon possession in her body. Minutes after the group has gone into hiding, the girl comes to her senses and goes straight to Needy's house to visit, scaring her friend then and throwing up baked chicken Jennifer left. Afterwards, on her way home, she meets some guy and realizes the true nature of her hunger. Only by snacking on a man does she gain strength, invulnerability, and fresh and healthy skin. Finishing her revelations, Jennifer exits through a third floor window, unharmed. Needy's suspicions have now evolved into complete certainty, and she has begun to study the literature on the occult in search of answers that sacrificing a non-virgin instead of killing her instills a demon in her and also that a demon needs to feed on humans to maintain vitality. Needy shares these discoveries with her boyfriend. She asks him not to go to the school party, saying it will be a smorgasbord. The boyfriend, of course, is very skeptical of these revelations and decides to attend the party after all, since according to the official version, there is a maniacal cannibal in the area. His mom carefully equips the guy with pepper spray and sends him to the dance on foot at night through the woods, where Chip is already waiting for Jennifer. She uses her advantages and several layers of deception to lure the guy to an old abandoned swimming pool. Meanwhile, Needy is waiting at Jennifer's party to follow the cannibal. The very same rock band suddenly arrives in their small town. These guys, strangely enough, don't interest Jennifer at all. She probably likes the current state of things and hence she's not offended. However, Needy is suddenly overcome with anxiety for her boyfriend and she sets out to find him. The moment she gets to the pool, her boyfriend is already a little bitten, though still alive. With a combined effort using pepper spray and a makeshift spear, as well as swearing, they manage to fight Jennifer off. But the boyfriend dies right there in Needy's arms. Righteous anger causes Needy to come for her friend. It must be realized that the demon has remained hungry and thus weak, which makes it possible to make an equal fight. Jennifer manages to bite her rival, but the counterattack with a clerical knife in the heart of the girl is more effective. As a result, the demon and the girl die at once. At the same second, Jennifer's mother comes running to the noise. Probably then, off-screen, Needy tried to convince the police and others that she killed the cannibal demon, so they put her in a mental institution instead of jail. This takes us back to the beginning of the movie in the present day. The bite transferred some of the demonic powers and abilities, such as super strength or levitation. That's why Needy doesn't stay in the mental institution for long. The girl catches a hitchhiker and heads east in search of the very rock band, saying that today is their last concert. Somewhere in the east, we see a popular rock band having fun and relaxing, but not for long. Soon we're shown footage from the forensics expert's camera and a surveillance video from the hotel, where Needy is seen in the frame. That's all for today. What do you think of this movie? Write your opinion in the comments. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more such videos.